Evil Dead Rise, the 2023 movie review and thoughts. So, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have some jokes and probably, there probably won't be very many serious topics. So, let's see. Right, if you're looking for a review that talks about, oh, the movie's different from the other movies and because of that it sucks, whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoiler, so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. Um, I don't think... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to not spoil the other movies in the review section either. Once I get into the thoughts section, I will be spoiling this movie, and there will probably be some spoilers for the other movies as well. Possibly full spoilers, so that I can be comparing the movies. But this is one of those things where, like, you know, if you don't want to go back and watch the first movie, which by now is 42 years old, you don't have to, you know, you can you can sit down and watch this one, you don't need to know anything going in. Everything about the concept that's important to understand is explained organically in the movie. You know, like, it's a different experience if you go into this having watched the other ones, but it's not at all necessary. You can 100%, you won't be confused at any point in this movie if this is the first Evil Dead movie that you watch. Now, this movie is rated R, including for language, so I will probably, yeah, I've, I'll probably also myself swear some in this video, and I definitely will be talking about some of the violence and gore that got it an R rating, so be aware of that. And, yeah, um, absolutely love the Evil Dead movies, you know, absolutely love Sam Raimi in general. So, um, yeah, even though Sam Raimi didn't, you know, he didn't write or direct this one, but I will just very briefly rank worst to best all of the Sam Raimi movies that I've watched. Spider-Man 3, Drag Me to Hell, Oz, The Quick and the Dead, The Gift, Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2, Doctor Strange 2, Evil Dead 3, A Simple Plan, and Dark Man 1. And yes, so I have watched this movie once, and I started recording this video basically as soon as I got back from the theater. And let's see. Yeah, um, the plot. So the... Yeah, our lead is Beth, and she comes to visit her older sister, Ellie, who's raising three kids on her own in a cramped L.A. apartment, and yeah, I think that is all I'm going to... Yeah, because if you know Evil Dead, you already know where, you know... Yeah, you know where that's going, and if you haven't, I think it's really, really cool if you go into it not actually knowing where that's going. You know, just be aware, it's a it's a gory horror film. It's going to have some stuff that's really going to, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very effective movie. Now, this was written and directed by Lee Cronin. And I have to, I, I gotta say, I don't know any of the other, like, now I really want to, but I haven't, let's see, there's three shorts that he wrote and directed, he, uh, let's see, he wrote and directed two episodes of The Master Plan, which is a TV series, oh right, another short, and he wrote and directed a segment of Minutes Past Midnight, yeah, that's right. This is actually only the second movie feature film that he writes and directs. The first one being The Hole in the Ground. 
that one is kind of, it, it only has a 5.6 out of 10. You know, this movie is rated much higher, so, you know, not everybody's debut film is amazing. Honestly, I would probably be, I'd, I'd probably be willing to give it a chance. Um, if it comes to Disney+, Plus, yeah. But the, the... Um, yeah, this is this is very impressive for only being the second thing that's feature length that he's written and, and directed. Um, yeah, you know that's that's a you can you can sometimes really tell if someone when when someone moves from shorts into feature, you know they don't quite have they can't they can't sustain it for the feature length, and that's absolutely not the case here. I was very very impressed. Like, if I didn't know, I would guess that this guy had a lot of work uh, behind him. Now, let's see. But, but yeah, um, you know, he does a good job characterizing the, the various, you know, as per usual for one of these movies. It's not a huge cast, but the, the few people there are, you get a sense of who they are. You know, nobody is just, like... Nobody's a complete, what's the word, cipher in, in one of these movies. You know, you always have some sense of, of who they are. And, in fact, the fact that you know you know who they are and you know their relationships, you know their interpersonal relationships with each other, that makes the, the horror even more effective because you're seeing them do horrible things to people that they're like that they care about you know it's it's so it's a it's a very particular kind of horror there's a lot of horror i love horror i love there's there's few there's there's not a lot of horror that i don't love but a lot of horror it's this sort of like just it's it's not necessarily like completely random violence but the violence the threat is something that is not like personal it's it's you know and that it can be incredibly scary I, some of my favorite horror movies s no seriously though some of my favorite horror movies are actually the kind of violence where you don't understand what why is it you know but this where it's super personal and it's the like you're seeing people do monstrous things to to people that that they you know will will go through you know they'll they'll go through fire to to protect this loved one and suddenly they're doing these these just despicable things that, you know he really nails that like that's that's one of the it's it's very impressive they're legit there is not a single bad evil dead movie like i know not everybody feels equally about all these but like yeah um the the um, i think that covers the right yeah he comes up with you know i i like the the change of location and i yeah he does a good job coming up with things that are unique to that the way that the other movies you know yeah, it's not really as more than to say, like, most of this franchise has been set in these cabin... Uh, is it one cabin, or is it multiple? You know, that's a, that's a debate to be had, but... At least one cabin in the woods, you know. And, yeah, the, the movies have always gotten good stuff out of that location, and... Yeah, this movie, you know, changes the location, but there is still, you know, and it's very clever because, like, in the woods, you can feel incredibly alone, and you might actually be very alone. You know, there's this sort of isolation of it. Um, I, you're isolated from people. You're isolated from the safety and security of modern society. Like, you can't just walk down the street and call the cops or something, you know. And this, in this cramped L.A. apartment, which is, like, it's too small, the stuff doesn't, not, not everything in the building works, and all this stuff, you know. I mean, it's disturbing to think about, because a lot of people do live, you know, in a, in a situation similar to the, and, and I do think that's 
intentional. You know, I think the movie is saying, look at how isolated we are. But yeah, they're actually, you know, the the um, they're not completely socially isolated. The the um the other pe some of the other people who live in the apartment, they have you know, they're on a first name basis and they feel comfortable asking them for help and such. But it's still a very you know, comparatively it is a lot more isolated and just yeah, they they really they do such a good job. I'm I'm really, really glad. I gotta say, when I when I heard that the remake from twenty thirteen was also in a cabin in the woods you know, like, I ended up loving that movie, but when I first heard that, I was like, I mean, is it maybe time to move out of the, like, just, yeah, anyway, um, let's see, yeah, the movie does a good job handling plot twists, and, let's see, yeah, so the, yeah, direction is also handled by Lee Cronin, so, yeah, uh, I think every single you know I love all. It, I will I will place this particular movie at the at the end of the review itself. It, yeah, I, yeah, I did already say I love. Yeah, I love all five of these movies, and for the first four, I will update with the ranking. I will update the ranking with this with the placement of this movie at the end of the review itself. So if you just want to know that, just skip ahead. Time codes will be in the descri description box. Yeah, I think each of these, I already mentioned for the first three, I think each of them is better than the last. I think the remake is better than the trilogy. I know, I know, some people think that's heresy. Uh, you know, the... And and I don't say it lightly. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not one of these people who just say, oh, you know, every new movie is better than every old movie. That's not at all the, the, the case. But they did legitimately... Like, it's... It's kind of wild. Like, the 2010s, there were so many bad horror movie remakes. Like, you've got the Friday the 13th. Okay, it's watchable. It's it's acceptable. And, you know, no, none of those movies are, like, amazing anyway. The Nightmare on Elm Street, holy crap. Like, it's the... It's basically the only outright bad one. Maybe also the, the sixth one. But, you know, then you have the, the um, uh, House, of, House of Wax. I like My Bloody Valentine fine, but I hear the original is, you know, way, way better. I've talked at length about how, how much I do not like the... I have no issue with Mr. Zombie himself. I'm, you know, clearly his work appeals to a lot of people. That's great. But I am not myself a fan of the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. I wish he had just made, like, a Friday the 13th movie. I did that, you know, his style would be fine for that. But to, to apply his very specific style to Halloween, which was a completely different thing, anyway... You know, basically Scream 4, which isn't quite one, but, you know, Scream 4 and the Evil Dead remake are the only two good horror movie remakes of the 2010. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe there's at least one other. But that's, like, pretty much. like it's, And it's, it's, like, I really thought that they would end up ruining the, the remake. Anyway, I will be doing individual videos on the first four. And I have not been able to watch the extended cut of the remake. I do love the director's cut of Army of Darkness. Have not played the games or watched the show. I'd be happy to, at, at least the show. I, I hear some of the games are bad, and that's, you know, licensed video games are almost always bad. Now, there are six years between the first two, four between two, two and three, 21 between three and the remake, and it's been 10 years since the remake. I really hope we get another movie in much less than one or two decades. You know, honestly, I think I, I think it was a really good impulse to, to take it to a different location. 
if I were to pitch, um, a, you know, you could very easily, you could do a sequel to this, or you could start over, which certainly it seems like they're, they're pretty fond of, of just starting, you know, every, every 10 or 20 years, they'll, they'll just start over on the, on the Evil Dead movies, but, but yeah, I think they could very easily just go to uh, another location that has these important qualities that I mentioned, you know, isolation and, and such. Now, let's see. So, so yeah, while I'm not saying that the first two are not both amazing, they are, or claiming that they needed to be more different from each other than they are, they didn't. By today, you got to do something different if you're going to do another Evil Dead movie. And, yeah, I think this one does... You know, it's just different enough without being like alienate. Like if this, if you came to this and you're like Evil Dead, you know, one of the best horror, of it, which is yeah, it's agreed, absolutely one of the best horror franchises in all of film history. This is gonna be like you know, it's not, it's not the Raimi movies and it's not quite the remake either, but it stays true to the spirit, and I, do, I don't actually know, but I could imagine that Sam Raimi... I can... let's see... let's see... um... hmm... um... Yeah, uh, apparently Sam Raimi says that his yeah that Evil Dead Rise is absolutely terrifying. You know, they didn't like rip it out of his hands and just completely destroy it. Not to make light of that, that does happen, and it is such bullshit. I really hate when they take someone's passion project away and just squeeze some money out of it. That's not what happened here at all. They, it's very very clear that. The, the, um, you know, there's a, there's a real passion here and a real appreciation of what worked in the, in the other movies. So, let's see. Yeah, I got some critic quotes. The first 20 minutes set everything up. Everything after that is nonstop, very true. Some of the grossest practical effects of the five films. And serious darker tone than the first three, but some comic edge, comedic edge. That is very, very true. Um, I don't, you know, nobody else is going to out, you can't outdo Sam Raimi at what Sam Raimi does best. It's just, it's not going to make any sense. So why even try, just, you know, it would, it would just be kind of embarrassing for everyone involved. No, no, just, just go in a different direction. So, you know, this does not have the comedy of, especially movies two and three, you know, but it does have the kind of, you know, the, the, the evil is very, very cruel, taunting, and like creepy, and, and just, yeah, terrifying. And let's see. Right, so back to Craig. Love the change in location. It's claustrophobic. Love the conversation through the peephole. Yes, absolutely. Instead of tree branches, it's exposed wires. Some amazing camera tricks. Some of them from the Raimi trilogy. Some giving the director his own unique voice. The sisters are well acted. I gotta see more of the uh, of Ellie. Let's see, and yeah, one, at least one of the characters handles the physicality well. Running, shouting, very intense. There is no fat on this thing. Wild, crazy, bloody ride until the third act. And let's see. I think that might be about what I have to say about direction. So, yeah, uh, the opening does a really good job setting up the the rest of the movie and also just giving you like the uh, the start of the movie very much. It's it's kind of like you know I I think there maybe maybe Lee Cronin was like 
you know, even if the trailer and word of mouth and everything gets people into the into the theater, once they're in the seat, are they going to be like, is this really going to, I don't know, I don't love the idea of a non-Sam Raimi written and directed Evil Dead, and he's like, I got you. Don't worry. Just this is I'm going to I'm going to prove to you that I understand what this is about and he does. He does a really really solid job. And I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits what came before. I think the ending is perfect. Uh, let's see. There's no Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. And Google said there was no post credit scene or that kind of thing, so I did not stay to investigate because I've never known Google to be wrong about that kind of thing. That brings us to the cast. So, yeah, Lily Sullivan plays Beth. And the... Do I want to say... Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. I'm keeping it spoiler free for now. But basically, like, you know, she wants to be a she. She wants to be a cool aunt. You know, she wants to. She's like bringing presents and she wants to impress the the kids, and she is trying to be like to actually help take care of of the kids. And it is like, you know. One of the first things you see in the movie is the kids, and, like, you do get a sense, oh, wow, Ellie has her hands full with these three, because they're, you know, two of them are teenagers, and the, yeah, there's some, there's some sibling rivalry, and there's, like, just, yeah, and... Yeah, you know, Beth, She's she feels bad about not having been there for a while, and now she's like, she's trying to be the rock. Alyssa Sutherland plays Ellie, and, like, amazing performance. I mean, honestly, everyone gives a really, really amazing performance here, but, yeah, Alyssa Sutherland, probably the MVP. You really get, like, the the... She is devoted to these kids. Like, she does not want anything to happen to them. It just, it, it really, really, you know, so, so just the, yeah, I, that's basically everything I can say without spoiling anything. Morgan Davies plays Danny, who fancy, fancies himself a DJ, and, like, yeah, like, I, I've, I didn't, yeah, there's a, there's a thing there which you may have already guessed if you, if you're very familiar with this franchise, but, yeah, you know, he's, he's trying to be a good brother, and he does, yeah, he does care about the others, whilst also, you know, he gotta, he's, you know, he has to show that he's a man, and, you know, just, and Gabrielle Eccles as Bridget, there's this very, there's, there's a scene very early on where, like, one of the boys from the apartment building comes to, you know, invite her, to watch the the Freddy movies, all of them, and then you know his kid brother adds even the shitty ones, to which the older brother asserts there are no shitty ones. Which, okay, that's that's a perfectly acceptable point of view. I kind of want I I, I kind of do want to hear this kid defend the remake and the sixth movie. But okay, to each their own, you know, just, you get a set, that, that's like, you know, and, and the, 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 the youngest sister says, your boyfriends are weird, or something like that, you know, and it's, yeah, you know, that's, that's, you know, ultimately she's not, like, in love with the idea, but it does tell you something that that's the kind of thing that, 
you know, to impress her, the the boy next door says, want to watch the Freddy movies? There are no shitty ones. Uh, let's see. And, yeah, Nell Fisher plays Cassie. She, like, I... It's rare for a child actor to impress me. You know, I... I there have been a, a lot of more recent, really talented ones, but yeah, um, really, really talented. And it, it is this thing of like, you know, someone of that age. It's it's difficult to find someone of that age who can act really convincingly. Oh wow! Wait, she's from she's from twenty eleven, so she's. Like eleven or twelve? Really? Wow. She. That is not the age I would have. Anyway. Um. But but yeah. The. You know, it's difficult to find a good actor of that age. But if you can, like, we as the audience are especially terrified for this tiny little person stuck in this really dangerous situation. There's also some chance that maybe she's going to make a mistake because, you know, she's she doesn't have that much life experience. You know, she does her her reasoning skills haven't fully developed yet. So, you know, it's not like the other movies where we just kind of have to accept that people are making really weird bad decisions, you know. I love the original three, but like, holy crap, es especially the first two. The the third one, not quite as as much, but yeah. You know, bo both this and the remake do a really good job explaining why the bad decisions are made. Because without bad decisions made, it's really, really difficult to get a horror movie going. And I think I will let... Oh, wait, actually, yeah, hold on. Um, let's see, so that's that person. Yeah, um, let's see. I'm not going to pretend that I completely picked up these characters' names. Um... Right, so yeah, uh, I, I did want to briefly note the, the um, you know, there's there's decent, like, um, ethnic diversity here. The, you know, it's not only white people. And, like, there's, you know, there, there are multiple women in, in all of these, but... Yeah, I, th I feel like this one maybe especially, like, yeah, uh, yes, it really has a lot of empathy. This this movie has a lot of empathy for, for young women. You know, we have Ellie, who's a working single mother, and I don't know if I want to talk about what exactly Beth... Yeah, she, um, yes, what I will say is she has a job, and, you know, it seems like people don't completely take her seriously for the situation that she's in, you know. So there is this theme in this movie of, you know, yeah, women being, you know, forced into bad situations where they have to make do on their own. You know, Ellie says very plainly, very early in the movie, you know, he, the the um, the children's father, I forget his name, you know, thought that, you know, his part of the parenting would be handled by the child support payment, you know, so, yeah. And let's see. Yeah. 
yes, the the cinematography is really really solid. Like, there's some there's some astonishing camera work in in this movie. There are some shots where like. Yeah, let's uh, with without giving too much detail, I will just say that's right. Dave Garbett is the DP, and let's see. Yeah, he's DP of twenty four movies or uh, twenty four titles. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So some of them are shorts and episodes of TV shows, but this is not the only feature film. Oh, and he actually he DP'd fourteen episodes of the Ash vs. Evil Dead show. And that one has 30 episodes total, so, you know, almost half of the show he DP'd. Yeah, no wonder they brought him on for this as well. Yeah, it is, it, he hasn't done very many movies. But, but yeah, like, there are, you know, it's a, it's a standby, but there, it is really well done. There are a couple of times where... There will be something in the background that we, the audience, can tell that's there's something there's something wrong there, or maybe we can even see something dangerous moving, and the characters are facing the camera, so they they can't see the thing moving behind them, and just yeah. And the editing was handled by Brian Shaw, who has edited 34 titles and again not a huge amount of feature films a lot of TV stuff TV shows TV movies but yeah um, also really really excellent job then we have the this Oh, it was filmed in New Zealand. Wow. Yeah, I guess I'm... Yeah, the... the What's it called? The, um... Ah. Uh, you know, as long as they can... Actually, yeah, I guess I don't know for sure if it was filmed in an actual apartment building. Because it might have been more cost-effective to use sets. But... The, um, but but yeah, you know, set in the the city, ran in the outskirts of the woods, and yeah, works works really really well. They do a great job of you know, it still feels like you know you still feel trapped there. The music was handled by S Stephen McCann, Irish composer who... Okay, so he's composed for 95 already, and there are three upcoming. And this... Uh, yeah, it's not the only movie he has done... And, yeah, it's incredibly scary music. The, the music is one of the, the most effective parts of how scary it is. And the sound design is, like, amazing. Just all, every, every single Evil Dead movie has incredible sound design. Like, it's just... It's it's unreal, and there are some such clever little touches in sound that that just you know, yeah. I I um no, I I I really don't want to spoil. I I might talk some about it during the right and during the the spoiler sections. So the pacing is quite good. 
you know, the, the, yeah, the first 20 minutes or so is set up, but it doesn't feel like, okay, now we meet this, now we see this place and this situation. It actually, it feels organic, you know, it, we're watching a day in the life of Ellie and her three kids, you know. Now, and the, yeah, um, this is pretty much exactly 90 minutes from the start of the movie to the, to the, when the end credits start rolling. And yeah, I've, I've really appreciated it. It's, you know, it absolutely delivers the, and, and it's also one of these things I, I really hope, I, I hope we get way more of these, but I do hope that they don't at some point feel like, oh, let's, let's make a long one. Let's make one that's like much longer than 90 minutes. This might actually be the longest of the, the four, five, or wait, is the extended cut of the remake maybe slightly longer than, I've, I've actually, yeah, I think that one is like 93 minutes or something, but I really, really appreciate that they understand like from right away they they knew evil dead movies let's keep them short you know and yeah so the let's see the best elements of this you know it's great to see another corner of the evil dead universe another spin on it and the the yeah, these these subtle little messages of like, you know, it, it the the movie manages to make it clear that it's it's difficult for Ellie to to have to raise these three kids by herself without the audience ending up being like, oh, stupid kids, just stop being so difficult. You know, we completely understand. I also really appreciate like one of the first things. With, I, I don't think I want to give away. No, I, I'm not going to give away exactly what it is, but one of the first things we learn about Cassie, like, again, the moment you put this little kid on, you know, in front of us, like, you really don't, you know, don't, don't push it, don't make her, like, really annoying, and they actually, like, she's a little bit fucked up, like, there's, she's not completely okay, and that makes it a lot easier for us, you know, because, because, like, the moment, if you start your 90-minute action, uh, a horror movie, by putting a, a young kid on, you know, there's a lot of these horror movies where there's at least one kid in involved, and, like, in a lot of them, it's like, oh, God, this, this kid, why, you know, just super annoying, and... They absolutely, they, they, again, like, Lee Cronin understood, no, let's, let's make it, you know, a bit more, oh, that's right, yeah, he, he is also Irish, yeah, I, and, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's good to get these, these other kind of perspectives, because Sam Raimi is American, I forget, Ah, uh, uh, actually, yeah, the, the and the and the remake. Let's see. I'll have it momentarily. Evil Dead. That one. Fede Alvarez is from Uruguay. So yeah, you know we're getting different countries' perspectives on this, and yeah, you can really you can really tell. And yeah, so. This is this is the part where I try to force myself to say at least one really negative thing about it. So let's um I mean I think an argument could maybe be made that the the way it handles the ending could perhaps have been better, which I'll talk about in the in the spoiler section. Um, yeah, I actually, I I didn't really find negative reviews from from um, that that really. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. So the 
Wait, did I? Fuck, did I forget read to read reviews from other people? That might actually be why I don't have anything. Wow. I. Uh, yeah. Now the yeah so the thing I was most worried about was that it would try to to mimic Sam Raimi's style and really fail and it absolutely did not. The thing I was most looking forward to was a new person directing an Evil Dead movie. Now the trailers do give at least a little too much away, but they do also give you a really good idea of what the movie is like. Yeah, you know, the the first trailer makes it very clear they get the appeal and can do the next level version of it. Now, let's see, cover and poster. I think an argument could be made that the, the cover and poster are give at least a little bit too much weight. But it does also really, like, convey some of the, some of the kind of, ah, what's the word? the the identity of this movie what about it is different from the the first four and that brings us to rotten tomatoes where it has 90 percent and 83 yeah 83 reviews 75 of them fresh 7.20 out of 10 and the consensus, which means it's certified fresh, the consensus offering just about everything longtime friends could hope for while still managing to carry the franchise forward. Evil Dead Rise is all kinds of groovy. And there is no audience score. There are not enough ratings yet. It says zero ratings. Like, yeah. Um, and on Metacritic, oh, maybe no, maybe there are no user reviews yet. And that's why. Anyway. The yeah, the meta score is seventy three out of one hundred. Of the twenty reviews, nineteen are positive. There's only one negative. And let's see. Okay, so yeah, the the negative review. This guy doesn't think that it's actually scary, suspenseful, and tense. You think you know the the it's effective gore and such, but that's it. Yeah, uh, to each their own. I disagree. I definitely think there's you know scary stuff about it. Now the let's see, there are yeah, so it has a seven point seven out of ten, based on two point three k votes. 46.1% gave this a 10. 14.4 gave it an 8. 10.0 a 7. 8.9 a 9. 8.4 a 1. Wow. 5.2 a 6. 3.15. And 4, 3, and 2 are around 1.4% each. So yeah. Um, very positively received. And the that brings us to the user reviews. There are there are only seventeen, and if you hide spoilers, there are only fourteen. And I guess I could do a really quick. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, there's... Okay, there are a couple of very negative ones. Um, okay, so there's basically... There's four negative ones, a couple of average ones. Most of the reviews are very, very positive. Like, 8 out of 10 and up. And... Yeah, the, the effects are amazing. There's some really, really strong practical effects. There's some, like, CG and, and such. And there was, like, once or twice where I felt like, okay, that's slightly obvious. But 
it was very, very rare. Most of the time, it's practical, and I don't think there was ever a time where the practical effects were not were less than completely convincing. They're and and they get very creative. Like they thought of some stuff that's really, really fucked up. Like you know, this <laughs> do not make this the first horror movie you watch. Like this is the kind of movie you build your way up to. You know, if I watched this at like twelve or thirteen, I would be completely fucked up, you know, but, yeah, if, you know, if you're, you know, in, in general, like, for, for more recent horror movies, you know, build, build your way up to, to stuff like this, but, yeah, and there's some amazing stunts, also, um, and the, yeah, uh, violence and gore, like, they, they really, they get, creative and they I feel like they pretty much took full advantage of like you know there are certain there, there are certain things at your disposal in a cramped LA apartment with three you know dependents and the yeah it, it is they, they really do make sure that every single thing in the building that could be like really really fucked up to be attacked by yeah someone is attacked by at at one point or another and like yeah they they target like every you know no matter what part of the human body you're like oh please don't don't fuck with that oh you fuck with that you know they're they're going to they're going to completely so so yeah and let's see yeah there's not really sexual material and let's see there is a good amount of yeah i there there is there is some swearing now yeah this is this is definitely you know, if you, yeah, I've already mentioned that I recommend it to people that are into Evil Dead. If you don't know anything about Evil Dead, you know, if you like gory, violent, disturbing horror, and the the, you know, yeah, this core conceit of you know, oh, they're they're like isolated in this cramped LA apartment. Yeah, this is the kind of. I, I absolutely recommend this. And, yeah, um, 10 Deadites wreaking havoc out of 10 is my ra my rating. And, yeah, um, I think this is the best one yet. I, I really, really hope they make more. It's, I, I'm very, very impressed. And I think, I would, I would be happy to see Lee Cronin do at least one more. But I do also think, like, you know, you really get the the kind of... So, so you know, Sam Raimi brought this, like, kind of... Sam Raimi made the, the movies very... You know, it's, it's stuff that he would think about, as, you know, as, like, a kid or teenager... And stuff that he would see in horror comics, you know, and yeah, the you know the first three are very American, and then the remake, you know, it's it's in part this like there's a there's a there's a sense quality to the cinema of you know France and Italy and Latin America and such. And that's something that Feta Alvarez very much brings to the remake. Like, it, you feel, every, every time you see something really fucked up done to a human body, you, you feel like it's happening to you, you know, it's, it's very much that. And, which was not always the case in the Raimi ones. And then with this one, you have this sort of fucked up family dynamic, you know, which, you know, yeah. Um, I quite like Irish, you know, there's a, 
there is a very very like there's a there's a willingness to engage with really fucked up material in Irish you know you've got in you've got it in stand up such as Jimmy Carr you know ah uh, ah crap I should have I should have prepared examples of Irish movies ah uh, uh, let's see. The only one I can come up off, off the top of my head, Intermission, which I do remember as having some pretty fucked up humor in it. Uh, I, I gotta watch that movie again too. It's also uh, kind of fun because it's you know if if you sit down and watch that one like you know uh, I'll I'll find it real quick so I have the list. You know you'll you'll be sitting watching it and be like oh wow yeah he's in like American stuff now you know it's got Killian Murphy, Colin Farrell I feel like there's at least one and Cole Meany uh, I, I guess Cole Meany isn't necessarily yeah um Star Trek Next Generation and Con Air is, is American stuff he's he's in I really don't think I have to explain to you who Killian Murphy and Colin Farrell are yeah I gotta I gotta sit down and watch that one again but yeah, a variety of losers in Dublin have harrowingly farcical intersecting stories of love, greed, and violence is how IMDb sums it up. Yeah, yeah, I gotta watch that again. I'll I'll real quick make a note to there we go. Yes. Um but but yeah, you know, they, they have a, a fucked up sense of humor and yeah, like the uh, these movies have always had some really fucked up stuff, but a family like a mother and her children like that is next level that's just like dude like is is you, you know you find yourself watching the movies like is this okay i don't think this is okay i don't think i don't think people are supposed to watch family members attacking each other with with like sharp objects it's just, you know it's it's but but yeah, it absolutely works, and it's it's the kind it's this is the way you keep this alive again. You know, you you can't you can't keep doing the exact same thing over and over. You gotta have some new, and just yeah. That is it for the review itself. This brings us into the spoiler section. So from here on out, I will be spoiling. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely spoil the the this movie in the first section. In the second section, I I'll probably spoil all five of them. So, the first thought section is notes taken while watching on the pad of paper since I was in the theater. So yeah, um, it's kind of cool that this one actually sort of has a slasher style opening kill you know that's not in the the yeah that's not a real spoiler to say you know there, there's nothing like that in the first three and you know the remake has something in in that direction but yeah you know it's it's a it's something that is very very common in youth oriented horror so yeah is you know cool to see that they they went there and you know we have the the infamous you know camera tracking shot that gets closer and closer to the time you know moving through the woods and then we find out oh it's just like this remote plane that he is, is flying you know and and the you know she's like you know if that if that thing hit my head i could have died and he'd be like ah it it would just uh, like you know just, you know it it would break against your head or something something like that and then later it's proven no yeah it absolutely can cut a, a human head off and yeah we're in the woods and there's a cabin again and you know I gotta say I did not I do not recall the names of the the I think the guy was named. Caleb or something, but I did not pick up the two cousins' names. But yeah, you know, she's like, uh, you know, she really hates the what, what, what did she call him? Brain, brainless or something like that. You know, uh, boyfriend, and you know, she 
She's like, it's, I can't believe all of your other, you know, everybody else, you know, no, nobody else showed up. Which, you know, at the end of the, the movie, we see, you know, yeah, the, the reason that the two cousins, or the, the, yeah, the other cousin is here, not the one that was infected, is because she picked up the, the cousin that, uh, you know, the, the, wait, I think, is it maybe that one of them is blonde and the other's brunette? Yeah, so, so yeah, blonde cousin picked up brunette cousin in her car. That's why she's there, but other than that, you know, nobody else showed, which I guess might be because Caleb is such an asshole that nobody can stand to be around him. And the, the you know, she's she's sitting there reading Wuthering Heights. And, you know, I, I kind of love when people do this. I don't know. It's entirely possible that, like, Wuthering Heights is, like, Lee Cronin's favorite book or something. But I kind of love when people take, like, Wuthering Heights, I've, I've, I've definitely heard that title before. Is it considered a classic? Uh, Emily Bronte. So, yeah. Or possibly, now I, I don't think she's reading the lyrics to the Kate Bush song. But yeah, Wuthering Heights, Emily Bronte. And, you know, yeah, like, it's... <laughs> I don't know, maybe Lee Crohn was just, like, thumbing through, like, famous literature, trying to find, but, you know, he managed to find this really, really fucked up creepy quote, you know, and, am I saying fuck too much? Ah, fuck, fuck, I'm saying fuck too much, aren't I? Anyway, the, the, you know, and she's sitting there reading it, and it's also, you know, if there were other people there, why is she reading a book? So they did kind of need this situation, and, you know, Evil Dead functions really well when there are very few characters. So, yeah, you know, she's sitting there reading, and then suddenly the cousin starts, you know, so she's psychically picking up. You know, I, I really love seeing that. Um, you know, that's one of my favorite things in Evil Dead, and I don't think that they, like overdid, you know, and I mean, it is in part here in, in this scene as a reference, you know, a, a loving reference to the, the previous, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's so creepy, you know, it's, it's intensely creepy, this idea of someone like reading your mind, being able to, to see what you see, and yeah, I, I think they did a really, really solid job on it and she rips off the top of you know of brunette's head and dumps it and you know kills herself with the plane just yeah and blood mixes into the water she tosses the the head of the guy and she rises from the water as the uh what's it called the the title yeah titles also and we go back to one day earlier. I want to briefly say, I don't, overall, I don't really have a problem with this, but I do think, um, I could understand if some people felt that it was, you know, because it doesn't really resolve that. It, you know, by the, when, when the, when the opening titles come up, you know, the, the possessed, cousin is still there you know they didn't like manage to to destroy enough of her body that she couldn't keep you know so and and then at the end of the movie we just see how she was infected we don't see what happened after she killed the 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 guy there so you know i but then i guess if there's no one else there then maybe it Actually, yeah, I don't know 100%. What does it what does a dead eye do? If that dead eye did dead every person in its vicinity, does it just like <laughs> low power mode or something? I don't know. And we see that Beth is indeed pregnant and 
let's see. Yeah, and we, we go to the family and we see that there's some conflict between the siblings and the mom. I really love the thing of, will you get Danny to turn down his music and Bridges just, just walks past the door, turn down the music. I could have done that, you know, just, yeah, it's a, it's a classic, I probably will never tire of it. Like, I heard that shit in a Jason movie, okay, so like, I don't know, maybe not quite 40 years ago, but that, that's an old joke, you know, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's vintage. And the... Yeah, I, I really appreciate the the family all feel like real people. And, yeah, we're told that they're getting kicked out of the building. And the quake... Ah, uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, it, it unearths the... Yeah, we see the, the bank vault and the LP, and it sounds like there's something alive down there, which is just so great. Beautiful sound design. Like, just, it, it you know, Danny is like, I, I mean, there shouldn't be, there's, there can't be, but I have to, like, is there actually anyone alive down here? And then, you know, into right in his face comes the Jesus stick. And... He finds the book. So, basically, the book was hidden in this vault for safety. And, you know, the quake... It's, you know, yeah, but, like, basically, the... the um, ah, what's the word? Um, ah, it's right on the tip of my tongue. The quake was, like affected by the the forces of the you know the the evil yeah the the book did they actually i don't think they called it the necronomicon in this one i think they called it something slightly different but i mean it is the necronomicon it is uh, uh hold on does it maybe say hmm Oh, wow. The film was originally meant to release exclusively through HBO Max. It performed so strongly during test screenings, the studio decided to release it theatrically instead. Yeah, good on him. It's This definitely deserves to be watched in a theater. Um, I guess maybe the, the Wikipedia will have the... Um, maybe not. Um, yeah, I guess, and anyway, you know, the, the book is found, and it was the, you know, and, and Danny's like, maybe mom can sell it, which, you know, yeah, I mean, that's a, there's a, there's a logic in, there's logic in what she says, and I really love that this thing has fucking teeth, you know, the, the straight up, and it's not, I'm not going to claim that it's like the first time we've ever seen, you know, some, some teeth or some kind of biting ability to one of these books, but it never looked this, like, they confirm that the pages are human flesh, the words are written in human blood, did those teeth grow? Like, did they did they buy? Did they make a book and then like teeth grew to to keep it closed? Or did whoever made the book go out and rip the teeth out of you know? I mean, hopefully they killed them before ripping the teeth out. But knowing how fucked up they are, probably not. You know, like they maybe ripped teeth because there's like a bunch. There's there's a couple dozen teeth on this thing. Like, I guess the the lesser of the evil answers is that they just grew. Because, holy shit, imagine, like, 
removing that many teeth from, let's be honest, probably still living beings just to, to the, and, and yeah, you know, he struggles to open the book, but he pricks his finger, and the moment that some blood, you know, you know, comes out of the wound, lands on the book, then it opens, you know, you can only, only with sacrifice and pain and human blood can you even open this, this book, you know, and yeah, you know, he, he, the the you know it's a, it's a good book it's a page turner and he's you know we we see some some really messed up you know artwork and the sound design like really knocks it out the part like holy crap like we're seeing you know the this drawing of like people being tortured and then we're hearing the the screams of the people being tortured just yeah and let's right and and the when when you know beth is has has gotten the assignment that she has to make sure cassie takes a bath and cass is like talking about are you sure there are no sea creatures down there because once i went into the water and i got stung by a jellyfish you know and and beth is like i Oh, honey, I really don't think there's any creatures down, you know, and sticks her hand down. <gasps> and, you know, it's a it's a rubber ducky, which I guess means that Agent 47 can't be far behind. And the, yeah, Danny puts the, the first LP on. And, yeah, you know, the reason that he has... An LP player is because he fancies himself a DJ. He, you know, so. And did I see it right? Correct me in the comments. I might be wrong about this. I, I, you know, it's been a lot of years since I had to had any interaction with a with an LP player. You know, my my dad. I probably he probably ended up giving them away. Um, but he did used to have an LP player and Elvis Beatles. You know, some really, really, just amazing music, you know, so I'm not, it's not that I've never been, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm too cool for them or anything, but it's been a while. It looked like both Danny and Beth, when they're listening, they have to run the LP backwards, but yeah, I could be, I could be mistaken. Let's see. And yeah, some of the priests say it's heresy. And you know, once the once the incantation starts, and I really love like for for a while, like he's creepy from right away. The the priest uh, voice, you know, but once he starts it, the incantation, it gets like oh holy shit, that's t t terrifying, you know. And you know, Danny realizes this is bad, you know, so he he tries to remove the 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 needle, doesn't work. Presses stop like six times, doesn't work. Um what was the there was at least one more th um yeah, I I forget, you know, he keeps trying, nothing works, you know, if now that the evil has gotten this far it's unstoppable and l becomes possessed she's attacked in the elevator we have the wires like strangling her and you know pulling her in different directions just yeah let's see and yeah l comes back up and walks into the kitchen She's making eggs, and the the this intensely creepy smile slowly forms, and she talks about I had the most wonderful dream. You know, I'm I'm not gonna do the I'm I'm not gonna do the smile because it's yeah. I had the most wonderful dream. We were all together, and all I could think about was how much I wanted to cut you open, and climb inside of you, so we can be a happy family forever you know and even cassie is like okay mom can you dial it back like a 
a shade, like, you're, come on now. I cut off my doll's heads to scare off ghosts, but even I think this is, this is pushing it. And, you know, L has, like, a few seconds of, of, like, lucid, where, where it's really her, where it's not the possessed, don't let it take my babies, and it's like, wah, you know, fuck. And, you know, that brief little, like, yeah, I buy it. I buy that Beth, because the entire rest of the movie, Beth is risking her own life to save these, you know, the, the, um, yeah, let's see, her sister's, yeah, I'm, I'm no good with, are they cousins, or are they nieces and nephews, whatever, you know, she's, she's trying to save the, the three siblings' lives, despite all that's going on, like, you know, if she didn't have an emotional attachment, like, you know, she could probably get, you know, figure some way to get down the, those, I, I realize that the stairs are really fucked up, but there's probably something that, that, you know, it's probably not completely impossible, it's, it's, you know, it's impossible if you're trying to run away from something that's chasing you at the same time, you know, but anyway, yeah, I, I do realize that the stairs were really, really messed up, you know, yeah, she feels like she abandoned L when she needed, you know, and it is, like, it is really harsh, that thing of, you know, she had the the message on the, the machine, and she apparently, like, hung up on, you know, even though, like, from listening to, to Ellie's voice, like, clearly there's something important that she's trying to, to gently, you know, so, so, you know, and, and she says, nah, it's okay, I, I can't stand the sound of my voice either, oh, wow. But yeah, you know, she, Beth feels like she has to do this. You know, this is, yeah, this is, this is something she can do to make up for not being there for so long. You know, and yeah, just this, this very, very short conversation with, yeah. And yeah, the elevator doesn't work and the stairs are gone. And, yeah, you know, the, in, the, in the other movies, there also tends to be some way that travel is cut off, you know. And I do really appreciate, like, they could easily have just made it, you know, I don't know, the elevator just doesn't respond. But no, it's like opening and closing opening, and then they get a little closer, and then it closes and stays shut, and it's like, please tell me, if those doors did slide open, that you would not step inside, that you had that much, you know, sense of, of self-preservation, because, no, you know what, no, that elevator, bad news, stay out of that elevator, you know, and I, I really like, you know, the, the neighbor is, is like, you know, the, they figure, oh, I, you know, Ellie is dead. You know, she, like, she, she vomited and then passed out and now they can't, you know, I'm, I'm guessing they checked for a pulse. You know, so she's just lying there and, you know, the eyes are, the eyes are open and, and he goes up and he, like, closes the lids and then they just pop open and it just horrified, just... Holy shit, you know. May I pray? Uh, she she doesn't believe it didn't believe. It's okay. It's it's really for me. And yeah, it's they make it clear it's very difficult to escape the building and there's the, the this thing of oh yeah, you know, there is a there is a fire escape, but you have to go through a specific apartment. I realize that there are probably some American conservatives who are going to try to um actually this, but if you can't get to a specific, if, if you can't get to the fire escape without going through someone else's apartment, it has failed as a fire escape. It is not, in fact, it is a former fire escape. 
A fire escape specifically requires that you can get to it without just holy shit. But but yeah, you know there are places in big cities where you you might end up in an apartment where you can't get to the fire escape because they don't take they they don't care about your safety. So you know, and yeah, I gotta say when when you know. So, so Beth is sitting there next to, to Ellie, and, you know, she wants to listen to the, the message again on the, on the machine, because it's like, I can't believe she's gone. I'll, I'm never going to hear her voice again. I'm never, you know, I just, just, just one more time. I, I just, I'll, I'll be okay eventually, but I just, I just got to hear her voice one more time, you know, so gets up the, the smartphone and sets it to, to play the, the message again. And if I recall, it like for for a second or two, it's the same. And then Ellie from Hell says, "Help me! I'm burning alive." You know, I mean, I mean, they don't specify that it's hell, but I mean, sounds like hell to me. If it if it walks like hell and burns like hell, it's hell. You know, and and then Beth looks over at Ellie, and then Ellie moves. It just Holy shit! Just I, I really love. See, this is the kind. As long as you can, as long as you've got ideas like that, please keep making these movies. Like, I, you know, I would be against it if it was just, you know, okay, let's let's do another. You know, let's not have anything. If as long as you have something interesting to add, you know, all five of these have something really, really cool that makes it worth watching. All five of them, you know, and and like hearing the real Ellie through the machine, just yeah, really, and and you know the the phone, the phone screen also breaks, and yeah, the the they try to get her into the yeah, you know, after after this thing, you know, I'm burning. You know, so they they check her to ah oh, she's she's burning hot. We gotta we gotta cool her off. So let's get her into the bath, and you know, she's in there just just very very briefly, and then she jumps up. Which I mean, they gotta have like wire work or something to be doing that. Just it was incredibly convincing, and she's up there and she's like screaming and glasses shattering because of the the piercing you know, the, the, yeah, and, and, like, the water's boiling, and finally she falls down, and, I mean, if she wanted hot water, it's hot now, so, and, I think, yeah, and, and Cassie's, like, mommy, and, you know, L, mommy's with the maggots now, and she's got the mirror shard, and slowly walks, and the, I I love that the, you know just briefly the, the uh, you know she she makes like a a thing as if she's just like it's it's basically like a a faint kind of you know she's pretending like she's really and then she does actually attack you know and she stabs Beth's hand and then the tattoo needle you know first to her own temple. And then, like, close to the eye, and she gets it, like, you know, and she manages to cut a little, that just, yeah. And then she's like, oh, I'm gonna kiss it better, and then, you know, out comes the, you know, you know, you're, it, it wouldn't be an Evil Dead movie if there wasn't at least one character, like, projectile vomiting some kind of nasty fluid, and if there wasn't at least one person getting it, you know, spewed in their face, so, and she does the eeny, meeny, miny, and she bit off the eye of one and, and spits it into the mouth of the other, which, do I want to give away? So I'm, I'm. I guess I'll just say that that also something similar. You know, yeah, something similar happens in at least one of the other Evil Dead movies.
if you know, you know. And let's see. yeah, the the you know, then we get the peephole conversation, and you know, they they block the door, and I really really liked you know, so so yeah, okay, you know, temporarily Ellie is stuck on the outside, so she like looks off. You know, I I love that they like so much of it was like I mean they can't possibly have actually filmed it through the peephole but they like they set it up to make it look like it was filmed through the peephole and we just see her like turning away and walking off to the side and then she does something you know and like blood sprays you know in front of the the peephole and just yeah and the shotgun is brought out, which again, Evil Dead, you gotta have. Let's see. And, you know, the siblings try to figure out whose fault this is. Very, you know, yeah, sibling behavior. Is it hurt bad? Ever hear of anybody hurt good? And we get the lullaby, which I. Please keep doing that. I I am never going to tire of lullabies in Evil Dead movies. Like it's just it's so freaking creepy. And Bridget gets possessed, and you know we we hear the the voice and we see the the wound. Like you know she's she's trying to like rinse it. And then it like grows to cover more of the the oh wait so, sorry on the on the face you know she was yeah she was cut there and it's you know spreads which again we've seen before and it continues to be really creepy we hear the the voice appealing to her and like blood starts pouring out her I, I mean I say blood I guess tar oil something like that. It's this. It's not normal. Let's let's go with it. And you know she's bleeding from her from her eyes from her whatever. And God, I detest Donald Trump. Just just sometimes when I when I quote an an asshole saying something obnoxious, some people think that I'm in favor of him. So I just wanted to to make that clear. And she she spits out, and it's like worms and move. Just holy shit! Just incredibly creepy and and gross and just yeah. Let's see and yeah the the you know the Cassie opens the door a little bit and you know Elle's arm gets in and grabs her by the throat and is like trying to to get in and you know they manage to slam it on. Let's see, and Beth asserts again that she's not a groupie, and it's also, you know, uh, fairly early in the movie she says she's not a groupie, she is a guitar tech person, some, something like that. I, I mean, no disrespect, I just, I'm not really familiar with the, you know, but yeah, people hear that she's traveling with the band, she's not a member of the band, so they they figure oh she must be a groupie then you know i mean the fact that she is is experiencing this unplanned pregnancy doesn't mean that she's a groupie you know the the for all we know she does have a steady relationship with you know a monogamous one not that there's anything wrong with you know but yeah people hear that she's traveling with a band she's not a member of the band She's female, so everyone assumes that she's a groupie. Even, you know, the the guy who lives next door, who has a shotgun, who barely knows that she exists, you know, the thing he... Oh, the groupie, you know. So, yeah, you know, basically, she spends the, the movie... You know, she... Yeah, basically, people don't think that she's... As capable as she is they they assume that you know if she the the fact that she's traveling with this band must mean that she's just there for 
you know, that they keep her around to have sex with her. They they can't imagine that she's bringing something useful into the, you know. And Bridget eats glass, and it's like I, I knew I I it was in the trailer, you know. I I knew that it was going to be there, but it still really really freaked me out. So you know, and we have the the bit where like. You know, so apparently, like, you know, she, yeah, and she says, you know, I don't like things in in my in my tummy, so I have to, you know, and she bites into the glass, chews a little bit, and then we see, you know, it starts to cut through the throat as she's as she's swallowing the glass as it's going to just holy shit, and um, hmm. I am not entirely sure what I wrote here. Um, so moving on, and the yeah, the cheese grater on the leg. Yikes! And let's see. Yeah, and and you know. Cassie keeps bringing up Stephanie and saying Stephanie will protect us, you know, every so often. And yeah, Stephanie, like in the in the mouth of Bridget and out through the back of the skull, and like I mean, there's a yeah significant chunk of it just that went all through. And then the you know, or wait, am I remembering? I I feel like I we also saw it be pulled back out. You know, and she collapses, and Danny does make sure to to tie up Bridget to to yeah. And the door says, "Feminism isn't a dirty word. It's it's you know you you have to you know n not everybody's going to pick up that it's even there, but I appreciate it nonetheless." And let's see. Yeah, and you know they they have to check LP three to see if there's a solution. And you know Beth is like, okay, so just in case, here, have this now. You know, it's not safe to be alone. Take this. And Bridget is moving. Just, just a tiny little bit, you know. At first, yeah, yeah. At first, it's just like you see the, you see a little bit of movement in like the feet or something. Just beautifully done, cause like, you know, we're we're sitting there, we're like, okay, yeah, she's she's gonna be walking in no time, and no one is going to be proud to see her walking. You know, it's it's gonna be yeah, and Ellie realizes that the cat is up in the the vent system and again we realize uh, it's just a matter of time now before she gets it. you know and it's it's clever because of course Beth is gonna make sure that you know there's no way Ellie is gonna get in through the 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 front door to the uh, apartment itself you know that's not a thing that's gonna happen not with that thing blocking it you know but yeah the the What's what are, they, what are they called again? The the air vent system. And Bridget flies in, and Ellie comes in from up above, and that's right. Yeah, Danny knifes um, uh, Bridget in the uh, I guess chest or something, and then she takes it out and stabs him in the arm and vomits onto him and. And yeah, you know, the, Danny manages to to set Bridget on fire, and we almost get a full Bridget burn. And L is right behind Beth, and let's see. yeah, and and you know. Beth realizes it, and then L continues the LP in her mouth, like just holy shit, you know. She, 
So let's see. She, she, yeah, she opens her mouth and she puts like a, a fingernail onto the, and then the the audio from the LP comes out. That just yeah, really really creepy. And Elle realizes that Beth is pregnant and is grateful for another soul. And the scissors that you know we, the attentive viewer, remember. Oh right, yeah, because. You know, um, Cassie was playing with Elle's scissors, and Elle didn't want that, so she hid them under the, you know, yeah, very, very clever, and now she, like, slides them across the, the floor, and, you know, Beth stabs Elle in the head, and they go for the fire escape, and the, the shotgun takes off some, oh, oh, right, yeah, first they have to get the shotgun, and the the guy is lying there, and he you know he had his his hands around, so you know I have to you know get the the rigor mortis fingers off. I don't know if that is inspired by frenzy, but I like to think it is. And and the and the scissors taken out, just yeah. And yeah, one of the one of the legs is shot off. One of the hands is shot off. Yeah, very very creepy. When the the other people in the apartment, you know, came back as deadites, and they all chant, "You'll be dead by dawn," which I think, yeah, I think that is a direct reference. To, and and. Is that maybe... I feel like one of the games is also called Evil Dead, Dead by Dawn, or something like that. Blood in an elevator. That is not something I feel like singing about. And they also, they chant No Way Out, and you've got the bloody arms from above the elevator coming in. That's odd. Usually the blood gets off of the second floor. And Kazi is still alive, and they get to the car, the shotgun, and the you know the beeper. The they they can't quite get the the doors, the the electric electronic door to to you know, and then the the car. To, you know, for for a while they struggled to get that moving, and I love that like every so often they'll like look back. And we'll see the the door, and it's fine, you know. And after a couple of times of that, they look back, and the doors are like swinging, and it's like, oh no, what came through, and where is it now? You know, just that little bit, that little detail, just absolutely love, yeah. And so this this creature, I mean, it's basically like. The three deadites that were related by blood melted into each other, and it's just, yeah, really, really, yeah, great body horror. Like you, just, you look, you take one look at that, and it's like, human body's not supposed to do that. No way. That is, that is not a healthy thing for a human body to be able to do. And then the electronic door shuts, but Cassie is still inside, and. The chainsaw, and and Elle is gonna use it to take off Cassie's head, and the chainsaw gets tossed through there. And the there's a was it like um I guess it's not called a grinder, is it? Wood. It's it's for wood. Um. Yes, grinder is for wood. And the, yeah, you know, they're going to, they're, they're trying to, to push, to, to get Ellie, uh, not uh, Ellie, the Ellie creature is trying to get Beth into the grinder feet first. Like, she's going to feel a lot before she, like, um, you know, presumably she'll, like, eventually pass out from the pain, but, like, yeah, 
That's, you know, I'm not here to give advice on how to feed people into, you know, grinders that cut up, but, like, that is definitely the less humane of the two possible ways to, you know, and, and Cassie does manage to stop the thing, and, you know, Beth has the, the saw, and she manages to, like, saw through some of the creature and and push it into the grinder and we see it all cut up and blood is spraying everywhere you know like all over Cassie and Beth both although I guess they, they, were, they were pretty covered in blood from the elevator and the yeah so even with that there's still like the head of Ellie is still left and she, you know, and she just says, you're going to, it was something about, like, you're going to fail just like mom did, or something like that, you know, and the hero kicks the evil being for telling a pregnant woman that she's going to be a bad mother. That is a statement and I am here for it like seriously do not shame if you think that there's someone out there who is gonna struggle try to help them don't shame them and let's see so yeah Beth and Cassie are still alive and they've got the saw and then we see that the the cousin the blonde cousin from the start of the movie is in the the same car park and you know she sees all the blood and the demon enters her I guess the maybe the the reason that the family melted together I mean certainly Ellie had lost some limbs so maybe you know it would allow for faster movement if they melted together like this. I don't know. It doesn't have to have a rational explanation. I absolutely loved it. It was a incredibly memorable creature. And that brings us to the final section. Notes taken before watching. So, um, yes, in this... In this last part of the video, I will be spoiling details from all five movies. So, let's see... Yeah, um, the trailer released on January 4th looks great, really understands the appeal of Evil Dead, creepy use of old-timey music that is usually soothing. You know, it's in, in this, it's that... In, in the trailer for this, let's see... Uh, I think it's Que Sera, Sera you know... And, let's see, deadites that used to be comfortable to be around are now sadistic and creepy. It's not rotting skin, but it looks too pale, like there's no life in the body. The eyes are deeply disturbing. Let's see, and I do, you know, the it's, def, it's, it's far from the first, like, super creepy smile in on a deadite in an Evil Dead movie, but, like... I think it might be the creepiest one yet. Like, it's, it's like, it's Joker-esque, you know? It feels like just the, the, just, yeah, it's, it's completely wrong, you know? And, yeah, you know, once possessed, they do a warped version of something that you would normally think of as normal, everyday thing. In the first movie, they're playing psychic with cards. In the second Evil Dead movie, first, Linda dances behind Ash and it's sweet. She's full of life and energy. After she becomes possessed and he lops off her head, her dead body dances in a macabre mocking of the earlier dance. The third has sex between Good Ash and Good Layla, and later sex between Evil Ash and Good Layla. And here it's making an omelette breakfast and the game of Eeny Meeny, which, like, you know, normally, like, oh great, mom is making eggs, you know, and you, you know, you don't even have to tell her how do you, how you like your eggs, because she's your mom and she knows you and she loves you. She's gonna make, you know, and, and here, you know, she, she's, take, you know, instead of, like, taking the egg and, like, cracking it and, like, letting the, you know, she just takes the entire egg, 
smashes it into the the um, the pan, and the, you know some some of it goes like on the floor, and at least one of the eggs there's some blood in there, which makes no sense. It's it you can only explain it as like a supernatural thing, but it works. It's creepy and it's just yeah. Then a Konomicon is found in the building they live in. The creepy words on the recording unleash the evil. And, yeah, the fact that this one has a mother become a dead-eyed, her human children right there, that's something we didn't see in the other films, and that is horrifying. Imagine your mother turning into a sadistic zombie. Let's see, and... Right, so, yeah, I watched the, you know... Yeah, I guess I didn't mention that earlier, but yeah, I I I watched the the first four in the days leading up to watching this one, and the documentary for the making of Evil Dead Two has an Evil Dead baby short. It might be one of the you know I I know that there is just a collection of old Sam Raimi shorts. I haven't been able to watch that one, but I can imagine it was in there and. Yeah, you know, the, there isn't something quite... The, there's no Evil Dead Baby in any of the the five films. And, yeah, you know, it might be too dark for, like, a, a feature film. But, yeah, this does have a couple of Deadite kids. And, you know, yeah, it actually is the first of the five. All the other ones, you know, every zombie, every Deadite... I realize they're different. They're not the exact same thing. The zombies don't talk. The uh, uh, Rick, yeah. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Uh, the the director of the trilogy of the dead. So Dawn of the Dead from 1978. Romero. Romero zombies don't talk, whereas deadites don't shut up. But, yeah, you know, there are zombie children, but this is the first to have a deadite kid, and there's a handful of them. You know, the, there's the two, two of Ellie's kids, but you also have the two from next door. So, yeah, I guess four kids, four deadite kids in this one. And, yeah, I it's interesting that this actually, like, for... A lot of this movie, like, the main Deadite really is Ellie. Uh, you know, very, very cool. And let's see. The... Um, yeah, um... The first movie and the remake have tree rape. I thought this would have it with the in in the elevator, but it, you know, it's it doesn't quite. I mean, I'm very okay with moving past that. I I don't think that's a necessary part of you know Evil Dead. And yeah, um, this does not feature a cameo from Ash and or Mia. I know it's been a while since either of them were in an Evil Dead movie, but. They are both acting still, and, you know, Bruce Campbell is still playing Ash. Or that's, yeah, he played Ash in the the show. I'll find it real quick, Ash. This is Evil Dead. In, in 2018. Now, let's see. And, and, yeah, you know, this movie does not make it clear if it's in continuity with the first three or the fourth movie. Now, let's see. Yeah, um, according to IMDb Trivia, Army of Darkness, the alternate ending where Ash wakes up in a post apocalyptic future. I gotta say, I did watch that. You know, I love it. You know, I slept too long. I thought that was in order to, to stop making these movies, but no, apparently. Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell wanted to set the fourth movie in a post-apocalyptic future where Ash leads robots against the Deadites. But because the you know Army of Darkness bombed at the box office, 
And Universal Pictures disliked that ending. The ending was changed to Ash in the Present Day, saving a woman at the S Mart store from a dead eyed witch. And yeah, they abandoned post apocalyptic future. You know, there are a ton of zombie movies and robot stories in film and TV today, so it makes sense to, you know. Yeah, the, the, let's see, you know, at, at the time, if it had come out in, like, the 90s, and you had zombies and robots, I, yeah, I'm not sure there are that many movies that com combine zombies and robots, but, you know, since 1991, when Army of Darkness came out, we've had a lot of robots and stories, and a lot of zombies. Now, let's see, and, uh, yeah, I... Yeah, so the the yeah, the the creature near the end is it might be the the best one yet actually. Uh let's see. So the um yeah, the first the the original movie doesn't have a specific creature, but the ending does have the biggest deadite stuff. The second one has the physical embodiment of the evil spirit. Third has Evil Ash, though he does appear before the very end, The Army of Skeletons, and Evil Leela. The remake has The Abomination, the humanoid demon that Mia saws in half, which is also really, really cool. Yeah, I feel like each of them just gets better. That's it for this video, so hit me up in the comments. Let me know what is your favorite Evil Dead movie. What do you hope to see in the future? See, have you read the comics? I would actually kind of like to read, like, am I remembering it right? Does one of them also feature Darkman? I gotta, yeah, I love Darkman, so, yeah. And apparently there's at least one that has, like, Jason and Fred, just, yeah. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, there's at least one Freddy versus Jason versus Evil Dead, or something like that it's called. So, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. Want to more links to stuff like a relevant playlist, a suggested video for you to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiled thoughts on a movie, and one talk and one talking about my spoiled thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is The Mandalorian Season 3. Recently the reviewing thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want to raise this, you're in luck. You can check out my back channels. So let's catch my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.